Mini fans and welcome to another episode of the and Sarcasm Engineering Show. In today's episode, representing that well-known suburb of Morgan Hill, California, we have these, which are Trifox wheels. Now you might think, oh, he's always got wheels on here, especially those ones from Shaman. And these are indeed another one of those from Shaman. But a couple of things that are very different with these. The first is the price. They're not particularly expensive. The second and I can't quite believe I'm saying this, by default they come with NTN bearings. Let's do the weights. That one is 927 grams. And that one is 815 grams. So that gives a grand total of 1700 grams. The width is bollocks. 25 millimeters. The internal is 18 and a half millimeters. Now the ones I've got are 60 mil. So because they're disc, they basically have no brake track. So going from the outside of the wheel inwards, um, there's obviously no brake track. We've got this, which is the anti-fraud sticker, anti-faking sticker. Yes, believe it or not, even Trifox wheels get faked. Um, Spokes are steel and the nipples are not hidden at all. You've got a good five or six millimeters plus in there. The spokes are square, they're pillar spokes. Looking at all of these, they're in line. Spoke tension's fairly even across it. Because they're steel, I mean, the, w the wheel doesn't ride as stiffly as some of the other ones I've had, but even the front wheel is heavily laced and it needs to be because it's a disc brake. Then we move on to the hubs. And the Trifox hubs are, I think, I've not seen this type of hub before. Um, it's an O2 based system, so it's 15 mil axle size. Um, to get into this, the first thing you need to do is to take the cap off, and then we can go and explore in there. So the bearing on that side is it's an NTN. You can usually tell NTN ones in, in uh, LLU style because they have an orangey red seal, so that's what that has. And when you pull that off, which is fairly easy, you can spin it round and you've got the cap and the four pole engagement with um, a security plastic shield around the edge. Inside of there, that bearing on that side of the free hub looks like a 6802 to me. Um, I'll show you the, the ride results later on, but there's a cataclysmic difference uh, when deep, very high quality bearings are put in. So inside here, we've got a spacer. If you fish that out, there's another 6902 bearing in there. It's also a 6902 on the other side where the center lock disc brake mount is. The teeth engagement on here are quite a shallow radius. So the ultimate torque that you can transfer is reduced. But the advantage is the seal area around here is small. So the likelihood of penetration is small. And because it's at a shallow radius, the uh, tip velocity around here is comparatively low compared to the, the big ones that are, you know, yay big. Um, and that is beneficial. Free hub itself has the usual sort of small cut marks in the side where the cassette uh, gouged it a little bit. This is the front hub, and whoever's obviously designed this hasn't pissed around. 12 mil through axle through there, and again, another uh, NTN 6902 bearing on that side. This is um, cross-laced, and it really has to be because it's uh, got the braking force of the front wheel on. When I was riding this, it's, it's not like a very, very stiff wheel. Even the uh, rim brake, wheels that are carbon spokes are much stiffer than this so you, you know you can feel that the cap seal around the edge is effectively a tertiary seal because the primary seal is on the uh, bearing inside i've not really had any issues with this on this side the uh, bearing placement is as far out as they could reasonably get it and beyond the cap it's you know still well encased You've got an o-ring along the side of there to uh, to hold it in Right then, boys and girls, today is one of those special days. I asked Santa Claus for a new pen and he got me one of these, which is a Wacom, Wacom, whatever it's called, P 
pen and now I can write on here the the pen is working look at my handwriting boys and girls the 1.8 percent isn't that just the shizzle and if I go down here now if I turn my thing the other way around it turns into an eraser so I can I can rub it out <laughs> this is fucking ace I don't know how to click um, right we've digressed but these wheels are shite seriously don't buy them but you know I'm being very very nice about these wheels they're, they're garbage I would say they're garbage I'd rather chew glass now there is a lot of talk in various places about people getting uh, stuff that they want to sell and stuff this channel is not about that there's no way I'd recommend these wheels despite various individuals getting huge discount codes I'm, I'm not entering that at all by Hambini aged five aged five oh I'm not gonna live the end of this right show the Trifox website let me get the Trifox website here we go so this is the the website I've looked through it I mean it's actually fairly polished I would say as an e-commerce site I mean it's much better than mine you've got these customer reviews in here of which there is one um product details I mean you can go through here so they're available in 40 45 50 60 now I don't think that Trifox make these wheels I think they've gone to someone to get them made and then they put their name on the side of them um and we've got all of this stuff in here obviously the bearings were NTN and this is all very very nice to look at but then when you you know when I went looking for like a, a review on this I found this on the cyclist hub website which is basically like shill central if you go down here there's like codes for everything that you can possibly buy that's just like 10 percent off 15 percent off so whoever's done it has just like put in a load of search engine optimization stuff just to get them up to the top of the list but i digress what i did want to draw your attention to and i'll cover this later on is the wheel tension ranges um spoke tension ranges so if you look in here especially the front wheel and we'll come on to my one in a minute you see it's quite erratic tension um on one side and it makes me think that the the wheel rim is slightly deformed and the guy just kept on racking in more and more tension until he got it straight so this is the specification we better just check that pen is still working you know i did ask santa for a new pen oh this is amazing man absolutely the shizzle oh god right and i can rub it out look at that oh my god that's giving me a bone right um <clears throat> 60 millimeter uh depth did i actually say that out loud i probably did never mind right disc brake i mean this is all this sort of standard kerfuffle that you have to go through um now the aero performance on these um i think they're i put them on the website aero performance is not bad it's because it's a 60 mil rim um the depth just gives you that advantage but it's got quite a lot of spokes and they are steel spokes so the inertia is not that low either four pole ratchet exposed nipples wheel build quality normally if you're sending something onto youtube and especially to me you'd expect to get all of this right so they've obviously gone after the bearings and we'll come on to that in a minute um but the radial runouts and stuff they were I wouldn't say they were absolute shite, but they weren't good and nothing to write home about. It's you know it's something that you should tick in the box and it should just be right straight away. And the lateral run out, yeah, okay, it's up to a mil. But the tension was erratic. Um, but, and the other bit is the rim manufacturer. So if you have a look on the website, you'll see the pictures of the insides of it. It looks fairly clean. Now, my gut feel is I just haven't got to a point where whatever defect or whatever it is in the rim um is there i don't know if it's you know, excess resin or whatever but there's various characteristics on these wheels that aren't quite right so this is the tension i was on about so oh, balls all right so i mean if you look here and correspondingly here there's something going on and then over here i mean the tension is way beyond the five percent so five percent of the average it's just miles away um, I think what's happened is the 
extra tension in localized areas has distorted the hub. Um, there's other little parameters in here as well, like the out balance. So normally, if you follow that round, it's up at 600 gram millimeters, which is a lot. Um, I mean, some of the wheels, like the Magine wheels, are like 200, something like that. It's very, very small. I mean, it is within the acceptable range if you're not going very fast. If you're going to do more than about 30, 40 kilometers per hour, you, you really need to get these ones balanced because uh, it'll cause quite a lot of problems otherwise. I mean, I can barely go above 35 for a prolonged period. So I'm not pushing out megawatts. So yeah, I mean, I'm not really a good example for it, but the, the bearings and stuff were. So the, these are the bearing fits that I found. So when I took the wheels apart, um, front bearing is a P9, so a, P, a 9 is garbage, so it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It doesn't actually go like that, it's usually odd numbers, but the bigger the number, the worse the fit or worse the tolerance. So a 9 is a very unround hole. And we know we always like round holes on this show, so I've given it a crap. Um, and it goes to show, if you if you fit, a very high quality bearing into a crap hole, you will destroy the bearing. Um, fortunately, I guess the NTN bearing that they have in there was fairly stiff. If it wasn't, if it was something with a plastic cage or a non riveted cage, this would have been toast much, much quicker. So it's given them, I would say, a reasonable performance. Um, but it, it doesn't take away from how crap the wheel is. Um, M7's kind of like okay, M7's okay. M5, and I've put okay, but really that that's good. Um, but I was just having a bad day, you know, that time of the month and all that. Um, and then, yeah, P7 is borderline crap, and M5 is obviously good. So what you see here is it's very erratic. So yeah, it's just no consistency whatsoever. It just speaks volumes of whatever they're doing. And, you know, as I've said before, I think they're going to a company to make the wheels and then Trifox put their name on it. It's not really great. So this is the run out for the wheels. And you can quite clearly see where the um, kind of like errors in there are the poor bits are so you want these numbers to be as close to zero as you can get so up near the hub okay i've i've used dt swiss's picture here but you get the idea um up near the uh, the free hub where it comes up to the spoke flange you've got like 0.12 millimeters of run out i think it's because of that excess tension has distorted the rim uh, sorry the flange and that's what's giving you that uh, and then this one on this side is just crap, ma ma crap machining or crap manufacturing. They've got a load of circular fits in there and you've ended up with 0.0. It's very difficult to, um, to, uh, to overcome that once you've done it. You really have to true it back to, to zero. Right, the good bits. Well, it's quite cheap, I suppose. $700, not going to break the bank. And you don't have to pay, I think the customs tax is included, so it's $700 straight to your door. Um, NTM bearings is obviously a, a good thing, um, and Trace Velo has a discount code, as well as you know, Cyclist Hub or whatever his name is. Um, the bad, oh, it's utter fucking shite. Seriously, I would not go near these wheels if you can avoid it. They're so bad, I'd rather buy C-nut wheels. Now, if you're not familiar with who c not are, go and watch a guy called The Controversial Cyclist and he will explain all that to you. Uh, questions and comments, right, so we've got web page, more data in the description on hambini.com and please comment and like below.